And instead of comparing the empirical mean, they compare the upper bound of your confidence interval, mu k. And this mu k, why does comparing mu k makes more sense than comparing mu hat? Because mu k is empirical mean plus a term that is inversely proportional to qk. Okay, and this qk is the number of poles for the case R. Okay, so you can imagine if mu k, the empirical mean of two arms, is very close to each other, then this term will dominate. You will have larger mu k if you this arm is less explored. Okay, and if mu k has significant difference then this term doesn't matter too much. You just compare this mu k this, because this mu k dominates, okay? And so this is why this actually automatically balance the exploration and exploitation. Another um, frequently used method is called Thompson sampling. So what they do is from the history data, they just generate a posterior measure for the uh, expectation. And then what do you do next is you sampling from the uh, posterior measure. And in that way, you have the exploitation because this uh, posterior measure is generated from your history data. And you also have some exploration because it's a probability measure. Okay. So this is also a good way to balance exploitation and exploration. Okay. So today I'm going to focus on Bayesian-based policy. So here is the um, setting. So assume we have k arms, and we have total n times the port arms. The horizon is n. Okay. And for each arm, your reward x follow a probability distribution. You know this probability distribution, but some of the some of the hyperparameter for this probability distribution is missing, which we call it new and we call it environment new. Okay, this environment new could, uh, could be a whole uh, space or could be an uh, interval of your space, okay? And what time sampling is also a Bayesian-based pulse. What Thompson sampling did is, so at the beginning of each round I, you got some history data, okay? And this history data is represented by two quantities, S and Q. So this SK represented for the cumulative reward for the case R. And the QK represents for the number of poles for the case R. Okay, so this is a history data. Each arm has two quantities. Okay, if you have K arms, then you have two K quantities. Okay. And based on this history data, you will generate a posterior measure for your environment. Okay, for the unknown parameter in your uh, probability, distribu uh, probability distribution. And then based on this uh, posterior measure, you sample uh, environment from your posterior measure. And then you select the arm um, that is the maximum in this environment. Okay. And that's what Thompson sampling would be. There's another um, policy which is called Bayesian optimum policy. So they do exactly the same. <coughs> the, 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 the first two steps is exact same at each round. The difference is this last step. So at each round, after you generate this posterior measure, Bayesian optimal policy is going to solve the optimization problem for at each round. So basically you are looking from the current round I until the terminal round M. Based on this posterior measure, what is the optimal policy from current round to the um, terminal round. Okay, so each time you're going to solve an optimization problem. You can see this definitely has more computational cost, but the advantage of this is it has better performance. So here is uh, the performance in terms of expected regret. Okay. Expected regret is basically your, um, the, this uh, new star is that in this environment, if you pull the best arms starting from the first round, okay? So this is the, the optimal policy, which is impossible to achieve because you do not know the environment priori, right? Um, and this is uh, the reward for your policy path. 
and the regret is your best pol the the um optimal policy uh, minus your current policy. Okay, that's the expected regret. And you can see Thompson sampling has larger expected regret than Bayesian optimal policy. Okay, so Bayesian optimal policy usually will always have better performance than Thompson sampling. However, it has larger computational cost. And this Bayesian optimal policy actually has a pretty long history. Uh, starting from 1960, 1950, when the bandit problem is introduced, people actually spend the first 30 year um, studying this Bayesian optimal policy. However, there's a biggest difficulty, which is the computational cost. For a came on problem, if you have n horizon, the computational cost is n to the 2k, at least n to the 2k. Okay, so no matter n is large or k is large, this number is going to be very large. So the only breakthrough happened in 2079, which is called Giddens Index. So what Giddens Index, um, so Giddens Index can reduce the computational cost from n to the 2k to k times n squared. Okay, so when the arms, number of arms is large, then it's a very good algorithm, but it still has pretty big computational cost when this horizon n is large. That's first thing. Second, this getting index only apply to discounted cumulative reward, which means that each reward at the reward at each round i is discounted by a gamma. This gamma is a, a constant strictly less than one. You can imagine if gamma is close to zero, then the gamma to the i's power, the uh, round happening a few steps later will be less taken into account, okay? Because it will be largely discounted. And in this setting, the computational cost can be reduced, okay? So the question is, is it possible to reduce the computational cost for an undiscounted accumulated reward when your horizon n is large? And this is what I'm going to talk about and the connection between MAD and the PDE. Okay, so let's recall the setting of Bayesian optimal policy. So at each round i, we have a history data represented by two quantity, the uh, S and Q. And then based on this history data, we will generate a posterior measure row on the environment, on unknown parameter mu, okay? And given this posterior measure, what the Bayesian policy do is they calculate this omega i based on your history data SQ. This omega i is the optimal expected cumulative reward <laughs> starting from round i, okay? Starting from round i until the terminal round n. And this omega i SQ is the maximum of omega i k, okay? So this omega k is the optimal reward if the k's arm is put at this round, okay? And this omega i k can be represented by two, can be divided into two terms. The first term is the expected reward of the k's arm at round i, okay? Uh, which is related to the current posterior measure and your uh, probably density function, okay? And the second term is the optimal cumulated reward starting from round i plus one. Okay. So this can be divided into these two terms, which you can see if I want to calculate the value at round i, I actually need to know the value at round i plus one, okay? And I actually need to know the value at round i plus one from for all the x, okay? And if I wanna know the value at i plus one, then I need to know the value at i plus two, okay? Until you reach beyond the terminal round. And because 
on our horizon is only n. So our multi-unbounded problem end at n round. So the optimal cumulative reward starting from n plus one is always zero by definition. Okay, so we can derive the value of i omega i from backwards. Okay, and that's why the computational cost is high because at each round i, you actually need to derive from n plus one backwards. Okay, and that's why the computational cost is n to be two k. Okay, so how does that relate to hybrid and Jacobi Bellman equation? So I want to explain it in a more simple example. This example is a one unbanded problem. So this, the setting is the following. Uh, we have an only one unknown arm, A1, which follows the balloony distribution, gives reward one with an unknown probability nu, and the reward zero with unknown probability one minus nu. And you can see um, the expectation of this arm is new, okay? And another arm is a deterministic arm, one half, okay? So you, you basically imagine you have two product. One product, you already know the uh, click rate, which is one half. Another product is the unknown product, a new product, okay? You wanna know, uh, shall I replace the advertisement for the known product with the unknown one? Okay, so that's the, um, pro uh, the problem setting. So at each round, at the beginning of each round I, I will have a posterior measure rho I about the um, probability nu, and the uh, expectation will be represented by nu in this way, okay? Uh, and then you have two quantities, SI and QI. SI represent the cumulative reward from the first arm up to round i minus one. And the qi is the number of pulls from the first arm up to round i minus one. Okay. And we can derive this optimal cumulative reward omega i uh, by uh, the maximum of omega i two and omega i one. So omega i two, two is basically you pull the arm two at this round. So at this round, you always has a deterministic reward one half and plus the accumulated reward starting from i plus one. If you are pulling arm one at this round, then expectation is mu one hat. And uh, this is the accumulated reward starting <coughs> from i plus one, which can be represented by a function of omega i plus one. Okay. Okay, so omega i is the maximum of omega i one and omega i two. And okay, so this is the formulation, how you calculate the optimal policy for the variation band. Okay, and you end up um, uh, equation representing omega i by omega i plus one. Okay, so- Dynamic programming? Yes, it's very related to dynamic programming. Okay, and how does that relate to the um, PDE? So the key, um, key idea here is for scaling the parameters. So first, um, here we, all, we have n rounds, okay? Each round is a discrete, I, the i is from one to n, okay? So the first important rescaling is I rescale the round i by one over n. And in this sense, this n rounds will be squeezed into the interval from zero to one, okay? And you can imagine since you squeeze n round to zero to one, <clears throat> then the difference between two rounds becomes one over n. And as n goes to infinity, it becomes continuous. And same as Q hat. Q is the number of poles for each arm. And therefore, we also rescale it by one over. And its hat here is the reward, okay, the cumulative reward. And we rescale it by one over n. And later we will see there is also some different kind of rescaling. And you will um, 
result in different kind of PDEs. Okay. Um, after this rescaling, you will rewrite the original uh, representation for omega in a new form. Okay. And uh, so there, here it has another V here. <laughs> okay. And if you rewrite that equation in terms of the rescaling vector, if hat Q hat T and a V, then you will starting to see some kind of a numerical PD flavor. For example, this term, this is basically the finite difference scheme for time derivative. Okay. And this term is basically the difference at S hat. And this is difference at Q hat. And this is actually the first order numerical scheme for this following PDE. And this PDE is so-called hamilton jacobi bellman equation. Okay. So, um, and this is why uh, if you can solve this hamilton jacobi bellman equation, you will get a value function. And then your optimal policy k star is going to be free because um, as long as you can calculate the V value for all the um, S hat and Q hat, then you just calculating this uh, value for all the case arm and you choose the arm that is the optimal. Okay, so basically, um, as after you get this equation, the optimal policy is going to free based on the solution of this equation. Okay. Um, I have a question. Oh. So in MAB problem, we always have explore, uh, exploration, exploitation trade-off. So how does this HGB capture this phenomenon? Oh, by the optimal policy. Yes, so this um, S and Q is basically uh, tells you how many, Q is the number of poles, right? Which tells you how many this arm is, is explored, right? And this tells you the optimal policy based on the current of Q. Yes, so that will automatically tell you. So for the online problem, is this solving each of equation computationally tractable? Uh, this is a very good question. I will explain that later. Yes. Mm. So this, in this way, we only like uh, make the connection between these two things. But I haven't talked about how can this PD can actually help us with the algorithm in it. Like, okay. Just call this pi. Oh, this pi. Mm. So this pi is basically the policy we want to know. Okay, so if, for example, pi is one, means we should pull the unknown arm with probability one. If pi is zero, then we should pull the deterministic arm. Mm, yes, pi is a policy. Pi is between zero to one. It could also be probability. Uh, probability. Uh, yes. <clears throat> so here is a picture shows uh, the difference between the rescaled uh, optimal cumulative report and the solution to the HGB equation. So you can see the difference is uh, linearly decay in terms of when n increases. Okay. So Previously, it's a very simple example for the Bologna report. Can this be generalized to general uh, multi bandits with um, arbitrary um, probability density function? So the answer is yes. So the key idea is still the rescale in the round. Okay. So in general, uh, what we do is for the n round, we rescale it, squeeze all the n round into terminal an interval from zero to one. In that case, the difference between two rounds becomes one over n. And therefore, as n goes to infinity, it becomes continuous in time. Okay. And another rescaling is rescaling in the reward, is hat, which we have more flexibility. So we can have the rescaling for one over f. Okay. And for different scaling fn, we will end up with different PDE. 
And the, the key difference here is after the rescaling, the second moment of your reward, after rescaling, it will be in this form n to the fn squared. So if your fn is square root of n, then your second moment is still order one, which means you still have the stochasticity. Okay. If your fn is n, for example, then your second moment is going to be zero as n goes to infinity, which means you will end up a deterministic optimal control problem. You will lose the stochasticity. Okay, I will show you later uh, for different rescaling what's the uh, distance between the uh, between this two terms, the solution of the PP and the optimal, the actual optimal. And here's the general theory. So basically, we can prove that under some mild condition, um, the uh, this V is basically the rescaled. Um, cumulative reward. The rescaled optimum cumulative reward will satisfy this HJB equation as your horizon O goes to infinity. And the terminal uh, condition for this HJB equation is at time equal to one and is zero. Okay. Um, here has uh, several important parameter, mu bar, uh, and the second bar, which is the first moment and the second moment. And here, this mu hat and the sigma hat is actually the rescaled version of the first moment and the second moment. Okay. And you can see if the second moment is equal to zero, then you don't have this diffusion term. You have a deterministic, uh, stochastic, uh, deterministic optimal control problem. Okay. If you, this second moment is still there, then you have a diffusion term. Okay. Excuse me. Mm -hmm. So in this setting, if you have classical solutions, then your pi will always be the pure strategy. Yes. Yes. Huh? Exactly. Yes. Your pi, uh, because it linearly depends on pi, right? So actually, your um, your optimal solution will always be with probability one. You pull this out. Right. Yes. You just choose the maximum, the k to maximize. Exactly. Exactly. Yes. Yes. Exactly. Um, so. Yes, it's a very good point. And also, because this deterministic policy, your solution will also be not smooth. Uh, it will be a viscosity solution, which also have some difficulty if we want to numerically um, solve this equation. And here's some, um, some numerical experiments show you the distance between uh, the uh, the solution and the actual optimal um, policy and the actual um, optimal cumulative reward. Okay, so the difference between two, as you can see, um, they both decay as your horizon n increases. But for different rescaling factor, if n, the arrow is different. Okay, for um, if n is equal to square root of n where you end up a stochastic optimal control problem, then your arrow will be smaller, okay? For if n is equal to n, where you, um, you end up a deterministic optimal control problem, arrow is larger. Because this is actually, uh, you, you scale the reward too much, you, you basically lost the stochasticity, okay? You will have larger um, arrow, but of course, if you end up a determin deterministic optimal control problem, it's easier to solve. So it has pros and cons. There is a trade off. Okay, so now we establish the connection between the MAB problem and the HJB equation. So, how can that help us with the uh, actual algorithm? So let me introduce the algorithm based on this connection. <coughs> okay. So before we have this connection, uh, for each run I, I need to solve an optimization problem to figure out what is the optimal policy. Okay. Now we can offline solve this HGB equation and then we can get this free optimal policy pi. And now at each run i, 
I'm going to have a history data S and Q. And then what I need to do is basically rescale this S and Q into the uh, S hat and Q hat, and then plug it into the optimal policy I get from the solution of HJB. Directly, I will have the policy for this history data. <clears throat> okay, so this is why uh, the computational cost can be largely reduced based on you can solve this history HJB equation. Okay. So these are all K and does not include the computational cost for the HJB for equation. So it's no. given the HJB. Exactly, already. exactly. So the good news is for several cases, and it, those cases actually are frequently visited multi unbanded problem. The HJB equation, we have the exact solution that can be directly obtained. You don't need a um, numerical method to solve this HJB equation. So in that case, basically the offline computation cost is free. Okay, so let me explain those cases where we can have, we can directly obtain the exact solution. So it's actually these two special case. The first is the balloon year award. Okay, um, I have already explained um, in the beginning. The second is normal, normal reward. So basically, the reward follows normal distribution with an unknown expectation and a known variance. Okay. And in both cases, the rescaled drift and diffusion turn, they have a similar form. So uh, the rescaled drift term both is um, it's hat plus some constant over Q hat plus some constant. And these two constants relate to the prior uh, measure of your um, Bayesian framework, okay? And both the diffusion term is some constant, okay? And under this case, you can actually directly get the exact solution for the limiting HJB equation. And in that case, you can freely get the optimal policy. So you don't have the dimension of a curse of dimensionality. Okay, and I will show you some uh, numerical experiment based on this um, uh, exact solution of the HJB equation. So here I plot the, uh, here the arms follows the normal distribution. Um, and the environment nu k could be from negative one to one, okay. Um, and um, the result for our um, Bayesian optimal policy based on the HJB solution is plotted in the yellow line. And the UCB solution expected regret is plotted in the red line. And the Thompson sampling expected regret is plotted in the blue line. Can you remind me again what was capital delta? Capital, oh, this is the, difference between the optimal arm and the other arms. Yes. Okay. So uh, we can see that uh, in most time, most environments, our, um, our um, Bayesian optimal policy, it has less computational, uh, less expected regret than the UCB. Okay, which is good. And we always have less expected regret than Thompson sample. Um, only for some cases here, you can see UCB has a bit less regret than uh, our Bayesian optimum policy. The reason is because in this area, the prior estimate, the prior measure of our Bayesian is not good enough. Okay, because we assume the initial measure, the prior measure is close to zero. And here, the actual measure is close to negative one. And that's why UCB is a little bit better um, because UCB is that's not related to the prior measure. Okay. And that actually motivated us to a regularized version of the HJB equation. Okay. So there are several motivation for this regularized version. So first, this unregularized version, um, probably not as good as the regularized version when the prior measure is not good, okay? Second, as I just said, 
this solution is actually a viscosity solution, which you don't have smoothness. This viscosity solution is basically when you change your policy at this point, it's at this point, it's not differentiable. Okay. Um, so it's hard for you to numerically approximate this non-smooth solution. Okay. Second is the open policy, as Jian Feng just pointed out, is always a deterministic policy. So it's sensitive to small perturbation. Okay. Um, so after we add a regular right. Oh, I got lost. The which part shows the regularization? Oh, I haven't, oh. haven't talked about that yet. Yeah, so, so that's the motivation. And now I'm going to talk about the regular rise. Uh, so first, uh, this HGB equation is according to this stochastic optimum control problem. Okay. Um, you can see we are trying to optimize the reward and the uh, cumulative reward is controlled by the first moment and second moment and your policy. And the number of poles is determined by your policy. Okay. And the regularized version is just to add a regularized term at the objective function. So this term actually will um, prevent your policy becoming deterministic because when your policy becomes deterministic, when pi, some pi is equal to zero, then log pi is going to be negative infinity. Okay, so uh, this will prevent you to, to, this will generate an optimum policy that was, will always be stochastic. Okay, and for this regularized version of the equation, we will end up um, uh, something like this. And the, uh, the advantage of this framework is that you always have a stochastic policy, so it's less sensitive to perturbation. Second, it encourages more exploration. So even if you have a bad prior measure, you will have a better expected regret. Third, the value function V for this solution, the solution to this PDE is smooth, so it's easier to approximate. Remark. Okay, and uh, for uh, the previous two special case, the balloony and the uh, normal distribution, we also can have the uh, exact solution explicitly. <coughs> okay, and here is a numerical experiment shows. Um, so we have the same setting, but the prior measure is even worse. So our um, expectation is actually choose is negative one to one, but we assume the prior measure is square root of n, okay, which is far away from the truth. Um, so when lambda is equal to zero, you can see here you have the biggest regret, but when you put um, regularize the term, then you will reduce the expected regret. Okay. So, uh, so this is basically the main content of this paper and, and it, you can actually find, it's, it's actually published uh, in Journal of Machine Learning Research and you can find that paper in my website. Uh, I want to say something about the related work um, that is similar to our framework. The first one is um, True Group at Stanford. They derived a continuous limit for Thompson sampling. So they end up a stochastic differential equation to model uh, um, when, the, uh, when, the, uh, when the horizon n goes to infinity. Okay. Um, and another um, uh, related work is by an um, economic group in Colombia. Um, so they derived the continuous limit for the Bayesian optimum policy, but in a very simple setting where there are only two possible environment, mu one or mu two, okay? And our possible environment mu could be in a continuous interval or any, it could be more general, okay? So the main contribution of this project is basically, this is the first paper that gives the PD limit for the uh, Bayesian optimum policy in a general setting. Uh, second, based on this policy, uh, based on this um, connection, uh, we can reduce the computational cost uh, for calculating the optimal policy when n is large. And this is it. Okay. Any questions? Okay.
Yeah, uh, so uh, uh, 